One of the goals of quality improvement is to reduce variability in processes. Dr. Deming once used a funnel to depict what could happen when one reacts to variation within a stable system. In fact, let's head over to Dr. Bachman who can tell us a little bit more about Dr. Deming's funnel experiment. Thanks Ramon. Well today what we're going to do is demonstrate Deming's funnel experiment. All processes vary. When we look at the process and, it, and how it varies, what we want to do is we want to interfere with it. Deming used this as an example of how when we interfere with processes, things get worse. It's very simple. We have a little X down here. You take a little marble, you put it into the funnel, and you aim at the X. And you do that, oh, say a hundred times. And what will happen is that over that time, you'll get a pattern. And that pattern will look something like this. You'll have all your dots within a circle. And it will vary all over the place. All processes vary. You can imagine like shooting a gun. If you take a gun and even lock it down and shoot it at a target, it'll have that same type of pattern. All right, well, when people look at that variation, they want to change things. And Deming then went on to show that. But before we do that, we should talk a little bit about what things could actually change a process. Wouldn't it be really cool if you came into a group and they were talking about changing things and you could make yourself look really, really smart in front of that group? Well, you can do so. All you have to do is take a look at whatever process you have and then go to a board and you draw a line across and you do what's called a fishbone diagram. And then all processes can be separated into various components. So we're going to give you some picture images that you can imagine in your mind and that will remind you what to do when you're looking at a process and how it varies. The first thing is imagine yourself. Okay? And you're walking down the road. Okay? So things that alter processes, people. With this experiment, I'm doing it one way. Perhaps another person would do it a di little bit different. People. So imagine the person going down the road. And in front of him is a wheelbarrow. That wheelbarrow is a machine. So, again, looking at this, the process could be varied by using different size funnels and things of that sort. The third thing is that you see yourself pushing this wheelbarrow and you're coming up to a big building and there's two doors and one person is pointing to one side and another person's pointing to the other side so you're being pushed in one side methods again we might have a so that I put the marble way up here way down here there are various methods to how processes do so you're a person going down the wheelbarrow. You see some other people that are moving you to the left or the right. You go inside a building and there's this big, huge um, funnel pouring cement and it comes into your wheelbarrow. Materials. If you use marbles that are different uh, weight, different sizes, again, the materials would alter the process. And then, of course, the cement goes up into your wheelbarrow to a certain uh, level. And then you would measure that. So measurements, how you actually measure things, alters the process. Whether I use little X's or, in this case, aluminum foil, um, it, the method is dependent on how we measure things. So if we measure uh, things differently, you can get different outcomes in your process. Finally, you take that wheelbarrow with all that cement that you've measured in there and you go outside and as soon as you go outside, you're hit by a huge, huge wave of heat from the sun environment. Too hot, too cold, too humid. 
In this case, the environment might be, might be changed by um, differences in temperature. If there's a big wind coming, it could blow things off, um, uh, it blow the funnel around so that it would have things. So those are the six basic ways of measuring things. Now there's two others that sometimes get put into this, One, and they're very easy to remember. One is money, and then the final is maintenance. After time, what happens is this may wear down. Now if you can write those things down, you can then break down the process into the things that are causing variation and you can find those things that would be most important in how they vary it. So people, machine, methods, materials, measure, environment, and two others, two M's, money and maintenance. As each time the marble goes down and hits, there's going to be variation in where it hits, and we just can't help ourselves but wanting to uh, interfere with this. There's several ways of doing it. The first way we're going to do is, is what's called a type 2 uh, error. What we're going to do is we'll drop the ball, and then we'll put a little spot there where it was off. Now we know it's off, and what we're going to do is respond to the last fall. Well, this is the first fall, so we name it the target once again. And this time, now we have two places where the ball dropped. What we do is take the distance that was from here to here and just shoot, move the target over so that we will be able to compensate. We'll kind of aim a little bit over to the side and that, use that last point as our marker. And sure enough, we get a little spot here. Well, then we take this point and this point and go over here. So then we mark over here and shoot there. And soon what you're doing is using the last ball and, or the last marble that's hitting the uh, uh, surface and then using that as your reference point. And what happens after about 100 falls? Well, if you take a look at the board, what you'll see is that when we were just dropping it by itself, we had a tight circle. By just using the last point as our reference point, that circle expands. It's uh, about 50% bigger than it was before. All we were doing, though, was changing our behavior based on the last point. Well, what are some examples of that? The uh, uh, most classic example is uh, some people take out a cannon and they shoot the cannon at a target at the beginning of the day and they find it's 10 feet off, side, off the side of the target. They just move the cannon then so it shoots 10 feet to the other side and they think they're doing a good job. In fact, what they've done is made their errors worse. Well, how does that involve patient care? Well, a type uh, 2 error would be you get a complaint from somebody and because of that you might alter things a bit. You might have just gotten a survey and again you just alter it based on that survey. Um, you just adjust things in your schedule because of the previous person. This is a very common type of error, a type 2 error reacting to the last point of information. All right, once again, we're going to demonstrate another error. The first error that we did was tweaking, or we used just the last piece of information. A type 3 error is where we use the target as our reference point. We drop the ball. And in this case, we get a little spot, and then we use the target as our reference, and we would move the same distance from the, um, where the ball hit and the target in the opposite direction. So we'd move it out somewhere over here. So let's see what happens with that. So we would hit that, and whoops, there it goes. All right, so after a while, if you go to the board, here we had a nice tight band. If we just adjust to the target, what happens is it tends to go off in directions into quadrants, something like this. Or it might go in something in a different direction, uh, in another quadrant. But it gets farther and farther away from the target. Well, what are some examples of this? This is usually related to supply and demand. I make an impact on one side, but then the demand on the other side uh, is different. A classic example uh, that's used is drug trade. Uh, I, I put in tougher uh, uh, restraints so people cannot bring drugs across the border. What happens? The price of drugs goes up, so people will try harder to get it across. Examples um, in our practice would be appointments. 
Uh, what happens with that is, oh my gosh, we have a certain amount of patients we need to see. So we adjust things back and forth and back and forth. And soon what happens is over a period of time, you end up being farther and farther away from your target. Um, uh, the stock market is notorious for, for doing this type of thing. Farmers do this. Uh, they uh, plant a lot of crops. The price of, the, of uh, their crops goes down. The next season they price a little. What happens then is there's a huge uh, increase in the price. So we have tweaking where you use the last piece of information and then the second is when you use the target. The next method is also used and is very common but it has the worst results of all. Now, instead of adjusting things to the target or from the last position, what we do is instead of aiming at where we, we sh had as our goal, we shoot at what we had as our last target. And we keep moving the funnel to hit our last target. And as you can see, we get farther and farther away from the target. So this is the worst thing possible. What we're ending up doing is shooting at the last target and what happens is we just keep traveling until finally we reach the Milky Way. And it's off we go. We do this a lot. Some examples of this, train the trainer. You train somebody, that person trained, is trained. They don't get it all, they train someone else. They train someone else and soon it's off to the Milky Way. Passing down information. Think about how you do management. I tell someone, they tell someone, they tell someone, and then we wonder why the, mar the, the message gets garb into garbage. Uh, back in the old days when you used, uh, when you were kids, using the telephone game where you would whisper something into somebody's ears. At the end of the, end of the game, nobody knew what was going on. A classic is meeting times. You say, well, we'll start at 8. And nobody's there at 8, so then you start at 8.05. And it could be 8.10, 8.20, so finally you don't even have to have a meeting because people will be so late. This is called shooting for the Milky Way. So we have three things. Tweaking, where we use the last piece of inf information. Uh, the second thing, when we adjust to the target or to the goal. And finally, the worst thing, where we just keep following things from the last moment on until you get to the Milky Way. So let's take a look at what I think is even more important lesson from this. You have a target. Whatever intervention you do, it stays close to the target initially, no matter what thing is going on wrong. But over time, as you do it more and more, what happens is that you start seeing bigger and bigger errors. Now think about changes within your system. They always start out really, really good, but then as time goes on, more and more uh, variation occurs. And we now know why. Remember, we listed the six types of variation. Other things start coming in here to interfere with this. So when you start something, it'll start good, but then over time, other things will break it down unless you have another method of dealing with variation. All these things are called tampering. Well-meaning people are trying to add value to the system. They do not. All they do is add complexity and the system suffers. Tampering. And so we can thank Deming for his funnel experiment and showing us some of the things that we need to know so that we will make our system even better. And so the funnel experiment shows us a number of things. Despite our good intentions to fix a stable system, manipulations only made the outcomes worse over time. All systems have a certain level of inherent variability, and attempting to adjust a stable process will only make things worse. And so, a lot of times when we do what makes sense, variation only increases. So reflect upon your own system. Explain why picking the low-hanging fruit may be a problem. Think of projects where you have been given the opportunity to make improvements. 
Do you focus on the outcomes or on the processes leading to the outcomes? How does your job relate to the manager who tries to fix the funnel's output? And lastly, Dr. Bachman talks about how early ideas start out as inexpensive, but how costs tend to increase if you change your mind later. Think of projects you have started. How often have you watched and measured a system before an intervention? How long might be reasonable?